We're back. We're part three. All right. So the, all this is back to back, obviously. Um, we're going to look at seven and eight of chapter one of Song of Solomon or Song of Songs. Um, as I mentioned, we saw in part two where the Shulamith woman is rejected by her siblings. Her siblings are displeased with her. They're bearing a grudge. Now, you might try to guess, well, why are they bearing a grudge? We don't know. We do know later on the text. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find this verse. I think it's chapter six. Um, Cain, chapter six, verse nine. I'm going to break that down to you because that's what they added a sentence. The KJV, the Geneva, all these other, most of these other uh, scriptures added a sentence to that verse. And I'll show you because that's not what it says in Ibri. What the Ibri says is not exactly. They were trying to guess what that meant in um, chapter 6, verse 9. And they added a sentence. And they should not have added a sentence to it. Um, so I'm going to clarify that um, later on. But I will say, maybe they didn't like her because she was their mother's favorite. Okay, she was the favorite out of the siblings. So, I mean, that's what verse 9 of chapter 6 suggests. All right. Well, flat out says in Ibri. Okay, that she was her mother's favorite. Well, we'll go into that a little bit later. But going back to um, verse six, as I mentioned, in part two, you saw that she was rejected by her siblings. Now we're in part three. And you'll see that she's rejected not just by her siblings, but she was rejected by the flock, okay? By the flock of, of the beloved's companions. And I will enlighten you what Yah revealed to me that these companions are. All right. So verse seven says, tell me, I'm going to read from the KJV. Tell me, O you who my soul loves, where you feed, where you make your flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turns aside by the flocks of your companions? Okay. So um, I broke this down, as you can see. Ooh. Okay, the word to turn. Let's look at the word uh, Strong's fifty-eight forty-four, where it says "ke ya." Okay, I think that what it says. Cain, ke ya. Um, comes from the root word. Okay, so you see the base root, the ayin and the tet, comes from the word. Uh, ta, which means to wrap, to cover, to veil. Really, it means like to roll, to wrap, to roll, to turn aside. So it's like rolling, okay, being pushed aside. Really, what Yah was showing me was like a tumbleweed. It's like you taking a tumbleweed and you roll the tumbleweed away. So she's being pushed aside by the flocks of the shepherds, okay, by the beloved's companions. The companions here in this case are referring to other shepherds. And we know who we refer to as shepherds these days. Cain, pastors. Pastors act as shepherds of the flock of Yehoshua's sheep here on this earth. And remember, these flocks contain not only sheep, but also goats. Most, most churches and places of fellowship contain goats and sheep, people who are spiritually really of Yehoshua and those who pretend but still have characteristics of a goat, messy, stubborn, disobedient, stinky, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? If you know about goat's behaviors, okay? So that word is what's used here, okay? So flocks, this particular flocks, all right. All right, so let's go to the next part here. As I mentioned about um, the Strong's 5844, uh, atah, the root word atah, which means to, you know, to cover, to wrap. Really, to wrap, it really means to roll aside, okay? It just means to push aside, to push, to roll at something away, okay? So she's, or to turn it about, all right? So obviously people are pushing her to the side. The flocks are pushing her to the side. The flocks mixed of sheep and goat. Your companions is referring to the beloved's 
um, other companions, the other shepherds, which in this case, the modern day would be um, pastors. These are pastors who are pastoring flocks of sheep and goat in their congregations. She's pushed aside by the, not necessarily by the shepherd, but by the flocks, the sheep and goats within the flock. Okay, so it makes me wonder, um, and you go flock, how do you know that's the case? This verse, the word flocks here, and this, there's no word for flock here. That's why it has it in brackets in the KJV. Um, that's not what it says. Okay, the word for, there's no word for flock here in the Ibri. But here, the word flocks comes from the word a der, a der, which means a symbol, an assembly, an assembly. So if you say, uh, ed, re, okay, ed, re, that means assemblies. So it means assemblies. Let me show you, arrangement, an assembly, okay, flocks, herds, droves, ranks, a collection of assembly of, I think it says soldiers, Okay, because remember, when you go to a, a place of fellowship, you're supposed to be getting equipped with the word of Yah because you're supposed to be a good soldier in the army of Yahuwah, okay? Um, so when you go to a congregation, to a fellowship, to a church, that's what you're going as an assembly of people who are supposed to be trained to fight in the spiritual realm. At least that's what your pastor is supposed to be doing, your shepherd. I'm not sure if he is or isn't. Or if you are, if you do or don't have a shepherd, but that's what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, so this, these flocks, these assemblies, okay, these assemblies of people, really, of soldiers, people who are supposed to be soldiers in the army of Yahuwah, these flocks of people, because that's what the word is being used, and I'm showing you the base word here, Strong's 5739. A, I'm sorry, it's better for me to read it this way. Okay, and there. A dare, okay. A dare. This a dare, okay. Here, the word that's actually used in the text here is this one up here. Ed, ed re, ed re, ed re, okay. Ed, re. This ed re means it means plural assemblies, flocks, plural. It's, it's a plural word, assemblies. So these assemblies of pastors, essentially, push her aside. Okay, so that means she's probably attended multiple assemblies, right? But she keeps getting pushed aside, rolled away. That doesn't necessarily mean that she's getting pushed fast, but there's things that's happening that she's drifting. She wanders from assembly to assembly, from flock to flock of different shepherds, okay? So there's no set place for her, okay? Where some people get to go to a, a church or congregation, they go, I've been there for 15 years. I, I've attended for 11 years of my life. I've been there for eight years, and I'm still there at the same congregation I was since, you know, back in so-and-so year, okay? No. This, this Shulamith woman, she is being pushed aside okay she can't find a place where really Yehoshua the the beloved is really feeding and making that flock at rest when it says at rest at noon noon means noon is the heat of the day okay you can imagine the heat of the day in the in the midst of everything going on in the world you know she's wondering where my beloved where where do you feed where where are the people that you're feeding where are the people you're putting at rest in the midst of all the, the heat of life, okay? Because she says, for why should I be as one that turns aside by the flocks? Or, you know, like I said, rolled away. Some verses might, some translations would say wandering about from, you know, amongst the flocks of your companions. Okay, so there's no set place that she can really fellowship, obviously. All right, so that's verse 7. Just breaking it down and what it really means from the Hebrew and what the Ruach HaKodesh has revealed to me from that. All right. So if you look at verse eight, um, so she's not, she doesn't have a set place. There's not like people are like, hey, you know, you know, we cool here and you can be here for, you know, 
like I said, 15 years at this assembly. No, she's not at a set place. She doesn't have a set place um, of, of assembly, of flocks, of shepherds to, to be at. Now, verse 8 says, If you do not know, O fairs among women, go your way. Okay, so follow. That means follow. There's somebody to follow. Follow or go your way by the footsteps of the flock and feed your goats, your little goats beside the shepherd's tents, the shepherd's tents. Okay, now this verse is really interesting. So they say, okay, so she's one from assembly to assembly, okay? The flocks are not really, you know, they ain't really accepting her, okay? There's things going on. She wants to know where's the beloved feeding? Where is he making the, the real flock at rest? So when it says, Follow the footsteps of the flock. Strong's is strong 6629. And that word is ha zon. Ha zon. I'm sorry. The word that's used is ha zon, the flock. Ha zon. Um, ha zon. Okay, and I'll show you here. Ha zon 6629. <coughs> means a literal flock of sheep, goats, or ram. Meaning this flock of people is only one kind. It's not a assembly of people who probably mix with sheep and goats. This flock of people are actually true sheep of the beloved. True sheep of the beloved. Okay? All right? Um, so, this is what... Um, that will be. All right. I'm just checking something real quickly. All right. So, um, this word is what that means. All right. So, it's a different word for flock. Remember, the first word for flocks, flocks plural, means an assembly of herds, droves, really, a collection of assembling of soldiers. Okay, for approval or allowance in the place, in one place. So, so gathering of soldiers in one place. Um, whereas the flock used in verse 8 is mean the flock. Okay, the flock here, it just really means a flock or a group of sheep or goats or figuratively of men. So it's a group of men, which is men and women, you know, who are actually probably the true sheep of the beloved. And so she wants to know, they say, follow the footsteps of the flock. They go, follow the footsteps of these true sheep and feed your little goats. You know, we another term for little goats is kids. Feed your kids beside the shepherd's tent. Okay. So someone goes, well, she must be shepherding. No, it literally means, it literally means what it's, it's saying. Feed your, your kids beside the, the shepherd's tent. So. Um, these are shepherds who have tents. They don't have permanent buildings. These are the places that the place that she's being told to follow are the footsteps of the true sheep who are following Yehoshua, who are following the beloved. And they're in the shepherd's tent. So more than one shepherd or pastors who don't have a permanent place. Okay. These, these shepherds don't have a permanent residence. Okay. Of like we, we think of a church building. Okay. These are shepherd's tents. It says, feed your kids besides the shepherd's tents. And someone goes, well, what do they mean by kids? It just means that. She has children. That's just, to me, it was very obvious. I was like, oh, little goats. <laughs> kids. <laughs> she has children. All right. Okay. That was, that was pretty interesting right there. Okay. I'm trying to see. All right. Yep. So verse, I'll read verse seven and eight. Together, so now you can put this all together in proper context. I'll start at verse 6, so that'll bring it all together. Do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. My mother's children were displeased with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. My own vineyard I have not kept. Make known to me, O you whom my soul loves, where you pasture, where you rest them at noon. For why should I be as one who is tossed aside, wandering beside the, the flocks of your companions. If you do not know, O fairest of women, go in the footsteps of the flock. 
and feed your kids beside the shepherd's tents. Okay. All right. So I hope that was enlightening because it was enlightening to me. I, you know, like, did I get the understanding back in uh, January? Low, 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 low. And in Ibri, that means no. Low, low, low. I did not. So, as I said, Abba is just slowly opening my eyes to this. And um, obviously, it's for now that we must know what we must know. Okay, here's my other notes. Just some more strong concordance of those words. So you can see that I did look up the words for like the shepherd's um, dwellings or tents. Those are temporary dwelling places, tabernacle. Okay, which is actually, um, yeah, it was Mishkan, Mishkan. Okay, the word was the shepherd's tents, the shepherd's Mishkan. It literally means like tabernacles, places of worship. Okay, Mishkan. That's what we use the word for tabernacle, right? Mishkan. Let's go, go the way of. Um, I'm trying to look. Feed your, feed your little goats besides the, the shepherd's Mishkan. Okay, the multiple, obviously, which is the word is mishkenot, mishkenot, right there, mishkenot. All right, there's a lot more on this uh, Chilamese woman. I could probably, I could probably do another part four, part five, part six, y'all. This has been a buildup of notes over time now those notes came recently as you can see i dated the first one that was may and then um the one that just talked to you today was from uh june 2nd i met wrote those notes from june 2nd so those were more recent and the other ones i'm going to uh talk about um later on um were actually something that i wrote down maybe i think some might have been from last month some from february I think a few from January. So I'm going to, since all these things are coming together now, I'm just going to share them all um, one by one. Okay. So anyway, that's part three. If you have any um, questions, ask ya first. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not here to debate. Ask ya. All right. For proper interpretation and understanding, because he's the one who gives us the understanding. Okay. I, I would never look at it that way. Um, initially, but when you look at the Hebrew and the, have the help of the Ruach HaKodesh, he opens our eyes and then we see. Okay, so with that, I want to say shalom, shalom, shalom. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a part four just yet, but there will be a part four. Uh, probably will be a part five, maybe a part six, because there's a lot to go through on this, on this woman. Woo! Okay. All right. With that, shalom, shalom, and shalom.